Hey guys, what's up? I've got another video tutorial for you guys today. Uh, today it is the muscle uh, shirt. This one goes in a little bit more depth than my previous ones. This one also covers a different technique. Uh, like for the abs, I used a 6mm EVA foam rather than the upholstery foam. Uh, ab, yeah, these muscle shirts are, they have multiple use for different characters. I uh, like this one. I can use it for three or more characters. I can use it for Nightwing, Red Hood, Batman. That's just leaving this base color as it is. When I originally designed this, I designed it off of uh, the Nightwing from uh, the animated movies. But uh, yeah, with, uh, with that being said, let's get to the actual tutorial. On this, I used 6mm foam from TNT Cosplay Supply. All the muscle pieces are cut with an outward angle cut, and then I just hot glued them with high temp hot glue onto the shirt on a mannequin. Uh, you want to make sure you use high temp because low temp won't hold it good enough. And then for the upper chest area, the shoulders, arms, all that, I'm going to be using contact cement and half inch upholstery foam. Um, uh, the reason why I went with the 6 millimeters is because I wanted a thinner pro profile for the ab area and a thicker chest but not overly bulky. On the uh, upholstery foam pieces, I cut them all with inward angle cuts so they're all beveled on the inside. I'm using contact cement. What I do is I just go around the edge with contact cement on that and along the bevel on this. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and do that real quick. All right, I've got the contact cement on the shirt and on the uh, muscle piece. While I'm waiting, that, waiting for that to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and start on the other shoulder muscle. As you can tell, I've already got this one glued on. And all this is is basically painting on a bunch of glue and watching it dry. You want to make sure to apply the contact cement not too terribly thick, but thick enough that you know the first layer is going to get absorbed into this upholstery foam. So a good two layers is good for the foam. Same for the shirt because it does get somewhat absorbed in there, at least the first layer does. So I'm not gonna bore you guys with watching me paint on glue. We'll go ahead and skip to that. All right, now that the contact cement has dried to attack, I'm going to start with the center of the chest and basically just push down the edges. You always wanna start from the center and work your way out because you want the stuff lined up in the middle because that's kind of the showpiece. It's the part that everybody's going to be paying most attention to. And then as you pull and stretch it, just make sure that your edges are getting pretty close to your EVA foam or your rib muscles or obliques or whatever you, whatever you call them. Go up here to the top. And push down like that. And that's pretty much it. I like to go ahead and go around the edge a little bit more. Just pop it all down. Make sure it's all good and secure. That's basically all there is for the upholstery foam when you're gluing it down. It's the same process for all the muscles. If you wanted to use upholstery foam for the abs, you can. There's no rule saying you can't. Uh, but if you do use the half inch upholstery foam, it will basically level it all out and you won't have the uh, chest sticking out as much. Or you could use half inch upholstery foam for the ab area and one inch foam for the chest. It's all up to you. But yeah, just uh, while you're doing this, you want to basically constantly be rotating pieces 
uh, just gonna call it that. Like, well, once you get done gluing on this one, you're moving on to the next one, putting on the glue, so that way you're not wasting a whole lot of time. You're constantly working. Uh, that's the best way to get things done at a uh, at a good pace without wasting too much time. All right, now we're going to put on the fabric over the muscles. Uh, a lot of you guys have been asking for this one for quite a while. Uh, but what I use is Gorilla Spray Adhesive. I'm gonna do this one a little bit different than I've done in the past. Normally, I just put a shirt on over this with a spray adhesive, but this time I wanted to make it look kind of like a uh, like an armored look at the couple different tones. So what I'm gonna do is spray the muscles in the ab section first and cover it with uh, this piece right here. Hope you guys can see that. Must it works kind of like uh, contact adhesive. You spray it with the surfaces, let it get tacky, and apply it on there, and it should stick, and it should stay. There are a couple of ways you can do this. You could also use super glue and just the joints, uh, or you could use contact cement, but I feel like that would take a little bit too long. With this stuff, it takes all about a minute for it to get tacky. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and spray the abs and then spray the shirt and I'm going to put it on there. Right, I have sprayed it pretty heavy on there, especially in all the creases because that's where I want the fabric to really stick and uh, stand out. So you just got to be very careful whenever you're putting this stuff on. Because it does stick to itself very easily. Like I said, this is the first time I'm using this technique going out like this. So bear with me. It may not be perfect. But as you stretch this on, just stretch it to fit. Make sure you really get all the muscle pieces covered. Going around the edge of it first, and now I am just pushing in the crease of all the muscles to make sure that it sticks really well and I get that muscle definition that I'm looking for. It's all right if the shirt goes up over the chest because we're just going to cover that up here directly with the next piece of fabric. section is covered. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this be two-toned. I'm going to use a gray for the other parts and I'm just going to cover the chest and the shoulders and the biceps uh, 
separately. I think I want to do is actually even section off the shoulders and the biceps completely separate. So that way it gives it a uh, separated armor look. Yeah, just like that. It's pretty simple. You just got to be fairly quick and not let the fabric fold in on itself. And just push it all in there. This stuff should stay very well. I have yet to have any of my other uh, muscle torsos come apart with this Gorilla Spray adhesive. To me, it is the best stuff. There might be something better out there. I don't know if there is. I haven't found it yet. If you guys know something better, you know, drop it down in the comments below. Something like that, I'll try later on. The best stuff, the Skrilla spray adhesive is about five bucks at Walmart, five or six, which to me, you really can't beat that price. It's about as much as a, uh, a can of plastic dip, so not too bad. And that's how you make the muscle shirt and how to cover it with fabric or at least with uh, parts of it. Uh, now I'm going to go over the attachments you can use this with, which uh, one is one of my more recent armors is a Nightwing. And I've, this is the same process I've used on Red Hood in the past. It's just using high tip hot glue, EVA foam pieces onto a cheap jack that cut the sleeves and the hood off of. I really like using the uh, the vest at for armor because it just makes it a whole lot easier to put on and take off. It's a whole lot quicker. And if you have my neck template already, this works great for that. And what I've done is I've added Velcro right here and on the back to the armor pieces. And then I've also got some shoulder pads here. I don't have an actual tutorial for this, but I will go over it and the templates will be available. It just goes on like that line with the Velcro right there, right there. Yeah, just like that. And then I've also got these gauntlets. Use the same paint on the gauntlets that I did the shoulder pads. And of course they just slip on like that. Uh, this pattern for the gauntlets is, the same, is very similar to the one I've posted before. The only difference is with this, I added on a armored piece on top of it. Use it for Red Hood, Nightwing, Batman, just whatever. And it just slips on and off like that. And if you're wondering how I got the, uh, the shine on these shoulder pads, is it's actually pretty simple. Uh, once I put them together, of course I filled in the seams with the uh, uh, quick seal, plastic dipped it, then I sprayed uh, a gloss black spray paint over it, and then I went over it with a metal, uh, sort of like a metal cast uh, spray paint, just it's supposed to look like metal. Went over that, and then I weathered it with silver spray paint. And I actually didn't expect it to get this good of a uh, shine, and I believe that's due to the gloss black base. But yeah, and also this the shoulder pads, the neck piece, can also be used for red hood as well. I, I'll show you guys that real quick. Of course, you can also use this muscle base with it as well. I'm sure you guys recognize this chest piece. I have changed it a little bit. I used to have straps going over the shoulders. Well, I've just added Velcro right here to go with the neck piece, and then straps that go around your uh, abdomen and then around your waist down lower. 
And if you want to, you can leave it like this, throw a coat on over it, call it good. Or you could go with more of a tactical-ish. Just like that. Take the same gauntlets and slip them on. And you've got you a red hood. No jacket, no fuss, no muss. Easy. And if you want to, you could add some back armor as well. But yeah, neck piece, shoulder pads, gauntlets, very versatile. Uh, you could even make the same armor pattern and put a sabbat symbol on it, attach a cape to it, and you'd be golden. Uh, I will go over the shoulder pads a little bit more in detail. Uh, here just directly. As for the shoulder pads and how they actually go together, I'll go ahead and show you right here how they're removable from the neck piece. I just have a velcro tab right there on the bottom, elastic with the other velcro. So that way if you want to, you can even make multiple designs of different shoulder pads and have them attach to the same neck piece. But basically, these shoulder pads are just three pieces. Which, you've got the side, and you've got the front marked right here, got your hash marks, and that is this side. Just like that. Then you've got your top piece, and here's your corresponding hash marks. You'll cut this line right here at with an inward angle cut. And then it goes something like that. And you'll want to heat uh, preheat these before you put them together and use contact cement. Once you get basically the top part put together, then you'll have this shell. And then for this lower section right here, the template is going to be just half of it. But you're not going to cut the foam into two pieces, it's just going to be one. And so you'll trace one side, flip it over, so it's one solid piece. That just means it's less seams you have to cover in the end. And you'll notice there's a line right here. I used a wood burner to burn in that line. If you wanted to, you could also just cut this piece out separate, use two millimeter foam, and just layer that on top of there. That's more than fine. You can do whatever you want. Uh, but then you'll also notice that there is a line or a gap right here. And that is where the top shoulder pad overlaps and where you'll glue it. Now, I did use just the floor mat foam for this. You can use any thickness you want. I suggest using about six to eight millimeter for this, but it's all personal preference. But yeah, it's just super easy. This top center, that's the only angle cut you've got. Everything else is straight cuts. And then I've done videos in the past about filling seams. You use your quick seal. Wet your finger, smooth it out just as much as you can. You can paint it and you can't even see the seams. Especially if you, that'll damage it. Makes them blend in a whole lot better. And then I've also got the back pattern. Again, it is also just three pieces. You got your upper back, your middle, your, uh, middle back, and your bottom. And these pieces just overlap. And you'll cut the very bottom piece of each one with an outward angle cut, and then it'll overlap. 
was lined up in the center like such and if you want a seam line in the back then keep them two separate foam pieces if not then just do the same thing with your shoulder pad put it on there flip it over put them together cut it out as one that's what i did for mine i find it a whole lot easier and then again just using uh high tamp hot glue to glue it onto a vest or you can attach it all with elastic straps to make it kind of a, a more snug fit. And then with the ab pieces on that, you've labeled one, two, and three. And these are V-groove undercuts, which you cut the backside of the foam into a V-groove, glue it together, or use a wood burner and just melt it. And you just fold it where it has the nice angle and glue them on there. And then for the chest, it's the same red hood chest that I, on the armor I showed previously. Templates for that. Uh, ignore this line right here. So it, that was meant to be an undercut, but I think on mine, it's, you can do it if you want, but I find it better if it's just a straight, no undercut. But all along this bottom right here, it's an inward angle cut. And then on your lower chest piece, this is a straight cut. And then these lines right here are V-groove undercuts or the underburns with the wood burner. So it gives it a nice angle. And then the smaller end here is the center. So it lines up with that. You might have some trouble getting in the lineup, it does get easier after you put the inner cuts on the lower chest. But if the hash marks don't line up as you're putting together, you've got to push and pull the foam to make the hash marks line up. Because that's what helps it take the shape that it needs to be. And then of course you can always modify any of these templates to be whatever you need it to be. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much all there is to it guys. Uh, I appreciate you guys sticking around this long for the video. I know it's been a long one. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to try to have the templates for all this stuff down below in my Etsy shop. You guys, thank you so much for subscribing and watching. I appreciate every one of you guys. I hope these videos are a huge help. Uh, I do apologize for not having an actual build tutorial for the shoulder pads and the chest piece. But I hope the explanation really helps. You guys have a great one.